in Switzerland. Two years after the Arab Spring, is democracy winning in North Africa, the Middle East and elsewhere? Arab uprisings seem to create unprecedented opportunities for freedom, political pluralism and justice. But most of the region remains defined by political instability, fears of a new authoritarianism and greater violence. Has a new popular empowerment brought irreversible change for the better? Or are there new ominous realities? That's the BBC World Debate from Davos. Is democracy winning? Well, you join us at the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum in Davos, where hundreds of business and political leaders are consumed by the world's pressing problems. And that includes the uncertain future of the countries in North Africa and the Middle East, as we've just been seeing in Mali and with the terror attacks in Algeria. Joining me, Ahmed Davatulu, who is Turkey's foreign minister, who's uh, a foreign minister of a country which is a secular democracy with a booming economy that bridges Asia and Europe, a nation actively promoting a newly assertive regional and global influence. Navi Pile is UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, born in South Africa. She was the first non-white woman in South Africa's High Court, as well as being a judge on the International Criminal Court. From Egypt, Amma Musa, Foreign Minister in President Mubarak's government, then Secretary General of the Arab League for 10 years. He stood as an independent presidential candidate, coming fifth behind President Morsi of the Muslim Brotherhood. Tom Friedman, foreign affairs analyst and columnist for The New York Times, who writes extensively about the Middle East. He warned a decade ago of how the effects of individual empowerment and globalization would challenge traditional leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, our World Debate panel. Now, we've invited our global audience uh, to raise questions via Facebook and Twitter. I also want to hear from some of the Davos audience as well. What are your thoughts and challenges to the panel? But first, a question, a simple question. Uh, get a sense of your views on this critical question. Is democracy winning in so many of these countries? It's unscientific, of course, but it is a helpful guide. Two years after the Arab Spring, is democracy winning in North Africa and the Middle East? Can I just get a sense, those of you who believe that democracy is winning on balance in that region, your hands, please. And those who don't think it is. I would say more people think that democracy is winning. Amamusa, you've uh, just been a presidential candidate. Do you believe democracy is winning in your country, Egypt? I believe it is going to win. So far, my answer would be yes, but. But the president, President Morsi, is in his office due to elections and democratic process. The difficulties, I must underline now, what we need is a sustainable democracy, not just a democracy that brings a president for once or a parliament for once. We need a sustainable process of democracy. This position taken by the people, and I believe most of Egyptians now and the, in the Arab world uh, believe that democracy is the solution. But the other important element is to answer the following question. Are big democratic powers really serious about supporting democracy? All right, we'll come on to that, but it's yes in but. Countries? It's yes but from you yes, in Egypt. Yes, it is yes but. Ahmed Davutulu, your view from Turkey. Yes. Democracy is winning because it is a historical process. Of course, history will judge in the future. For we asked two questions when Abu Azizi burned himself in Tunisia and later in Egypt, the Tahrir moment started. Were, are, are these demands rightful? We said yes. They are the rightful demands. What we promised to our people in Turkey. Second, is it a, are we, what, uh, which direction should be in, on the right side of the history? I think it is a historical necessity because it is not only democracy winning, it is a historical necessity. In 1990s, Cold War has ended in Europe, but now Cold War is ending in our region, in Middle East, after almost two decades. It will end. Cold War structures will go away and democracy will win definitely. We'll get onto that detail in a moment. Navi Pile. So we've got two saying yes and yes, but. What's your view? Is democracy winning? Well, my view is that democracy will not fail 
in North Africa and the Middle, and the Middle East, because these were, were areas that came out of um, decades of dictatorship. And when there is such a fundamental change, uh, responding to the calls on the street for civil and political rights, economic and social rights, human rights, there, there will never be a situation where the, the, the uh, dictatorship that reigned before will prevail again. I hear from very many leaders in the area that they know that they now have to respond to the calls on the street. So they're very aware of the messages and calls from the street. I also want to indicate how there have been elections now in uh, Egypt, Yemen, Jordan, and uh, Libya, and all of them mm -hmm. have uh, been observed by international observers as fair. So that's a very good sign for democracy. Tom Friedman, a very different Middle East from where you were a younger journalist, certainly in Beirut uh, and Jerusalem. What's your view of whether democracy is winning or not? Well, I would echo Amr's point that, that um, uh, yes, but uh, I'm hopeful. But I think we have to remember democracy is always about two things. It's about self-determination, uh, the right to vote in a free and fair election. And uh, democracy is about liberty. Uh, that is the institutions that uh, protect, pr protect individual rights, um, independent judiciaries, free press, <laughs> uh, free and fair commerce. And um, those are yet to take hold. But I always remind myself, we in America declared our independence from uh, Great Britain in, in uh, 1776. Uh, it took us till 1788 to um, uh, get our constitution. So uh, uh, these transitions were inevitable, um, but the the outcome is not inevitable either, that we will have not just self-determination, that is elections, not just the hardware of democracy, but that we'll also get the software of democracy, which is liberty and the institutions that guarantee individual rights. All right, not everyone is on side here, but most people think that something's moving in the right direction at least two years on. Let's get someone uh, from the audience who was in Tahrir Square, uh, Mohammed al Dashan from Egypt. Is democracy winning? Thank you. Well, when we ask about democracy, it's, it is elections, but it also more, most importantly, accountability. Um, unfortunately, this is lacking very much in Egypt and other countries. The government, up to the president and above, uh, lack accountability. The opposition is faring no better, more interested in people who brought them there in the first place. So the question I would have would be, how do we reset this, this quasi-democratic, this stunted democratic process and make sure that accountability is part and parcel of the process from, from day one? Amma Musa, were you part of a genuine democratic process you felt comfortable with? Well, I agree with my compatriot about democracy and what we have to define it very well. It is not only the ballot box. It is the respect for human rights, for rights of women, the separation of powers, independence of judiciary, and so many other things. This meaning of democracy we have not yet achieved. But did you but, feel part of a genuinely democratic process? Well, uh, the same answer. Yes, but not yet to be able to say, yes, indeed, this is democracy. This is not yet democracy. This is the beginning of democracy. And that is what, why we do need to see good governance in order to support the process of democracy. They do go together. Ahmed Davatulu, do you believe that there was a genuinely democratic process in a country like Egypt, in, Lib in Libya, also in Tunisia, as we've heard from Navi Pillay? If we had this meeting two, two years ago in Davos, nobody would imagine that there would be an elected president in Cairo, in Tunisia, in Libya, in Yemen. So we have to be fair to these societies. In two years, they achieved a lot of things. The psychological threshold is over. Now, I fully agree, it is time to institutionalize democracy. But the psychological threshold is very important to end this beginning. But there are, there are uh, of course, there, are, there is a long way to go for full implementation of democratic institutions. Tom Friedman, what's your reflection, though, about the ability of the opposition to marshal itself against the Brotherhood in Egypt? Well, I think, you know, to our friend's point from Tahrir Square, I'd say two things. Um, uh, a democracy is only healthy. It's only as healthy as its opposition. Um, a, a, a new democracy, a, a party like the Muslim Brotherhood um, uh, in Egypt or in, in Tunisia, it's only going to be healthy to the extent that it is checked uh, by a free press, 
uh, and by healthy opposition, uh, and the fear of rotation in power. That is, that is essential to democracy. And um, uh, we still don't have that in place yet, uh, partly because we've just had the election. Uh, but also, I think one of the great disappointments to members of the opposition and to, to people from the outside who were rooting for this process has been the weakness of the opposition to come together in as united a front uh, as the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, there are a lot of historical reasons for that as well, and I'm sympathetic with them. But I think a democracy will only be healthy to the extent that there is a really vibrant opposition with an independent judiciary and free press to express itself. Amamusa, are you a vibrant opposition in Egypt or not? When uh, Ahmed was talking about uh, the, uh, a panel like this and uh, a president elected in Egypt and in Tunisia, of course, and other uh, uh, Arab countries, I must underline the role of opposition and the role of demonstrations and the anger that is holding in with the people in, in the Arab world that they or we want better. We want more. We have to move forward. We cannot look to the past without looking to the future. There are so many things that mean a lot for us. Democracy is this, is what I'm talking about. It is not only the ballot box as some as the photos in the major newspapers do show. Mohamed, uh, what's your reaction to what you're hearing up here about your country? Well, I think, I think that we position to begin with. Um, not, everybody who's not, the go who, not everybody who isn't the government is opposition. Um, and this has, in fact, weakened the, the, uh, the opposition process, added to which the, uh, the leadership has, has been particularly weak. So where are we heading? Where is, the is the opposition viable as it stands? Absolutely not, sadly enough. Navi Pele, do you think that this was a brief moment confined to only a few countries in the last couple of years, or is there something sustainable now or not? Well, may I also jump in on the question on Egypt, uh, because I issued a, a statement highly critical of the way the constitutional process uh, was done. There Which was, was no last national, autumn. Yes, national, there was no national consultation. And one of the points I raise is you have to deal with accountability, deliver on justice as well as democracy. And so the current constitution then does not have the clause that the previous constitution had about Egypt's compliance with international obligations. Now, whether uh, there has been uh, progress and whether it's sustainable in all other countries, we have to, of course, look at each country differently. I hold uh, Tunisia as the uh, a primary example of where they're going. We have our office there. They have uh, adopted a good constitution. They have uh, a 30 percent um, quota and many women parliamentarians, so they've addressed the women question. It's true. We've had to work very much because they were putting in language not of equality between men and women, but complementarity between men and women. And this is the kind of work that needs to be done by the United Nations, international communities, and civil societies, is to help the skills and knowledge to enable judges, lawyers, journalists, civil society activists to own the process and to participate in the decision-making. Well, let me give you an idea of what some other comments are, are which are coming in from Momo Fanbole from Monrovia in, in Liberia. I strongly believe democracy is winning. Look at what's happening in the Arab world. Anton Norbert, who lives in Canada, if democracy means just voting, then it is winning, which raises the question, what is the democracy we're trying to define, Tom Friedman? Well, let me say one thing about the sustainability of this moment. I think what is... Here's what I think is not going away. The people have lost their fear. Um, I don't think that's going away. And secondly, um, uh, every leader in the world today is in a two-way conversation with his people, all right? Whether you're a business leader um, uh, or a uh, political leader. You know, when, when uh, I was in Tahrir Square as well uh, for, for the revolution, and um, when I got home, people asked me, what did I see there? And I said, um, the way I describe it is that I, I feel like I saw a tiger that had been living in a five by eight cage for 50 years get released. And there's three things I'll tell you about tiger. One, tiger is not going back in the cage. Two, do not try to ride tiger. Tiger rides for Egypt, okay? If you try to ride him for your party, your faction, your sect, sooner or later, tiger is gonna buck you off and bite you. And the last thing is tiger only eats beef. 
okay? Because Tiger has been fed every lie in the Arabic language, every bit of cat food, dog food you can possibly imagine. And any ruling party in Egypt or anywhere else who tries to ride Tiger for their own interests or feed it the kind of dog food it's been fed all these years, I think we'll discover there's something really, unsust really sustainable here. Tiger is not going back in the cage. Foreign Minister Davutulu. <laughs> mm. Given